Good morning, everyone. Um, have you ever wanted to have stuff like uh, Smart TV or YouTube available or some screen sharing functionality on the main screen of your Disco 4 or Range Rover Sport? If the answer to that question is yes, then this video is for you. Um, this is actually something that I've been meaning to do this feature I've been meaning to implement on my car for quite some time because I honestly like this car a lot uh, but I, I kept being annoyed by having to stick my phone with one of those suction devices on the on the windscreen you can still see the mark it made when it was stuck on there um, and that was really really annoying because that thing kept falling off uh, the worst possible times and I just wanted to have some mean of, you know, like sharing my phone screen on the large screen of the car. So I could see, for example, navigation instructions or maybe play YouTube for someone, uh, stuff like that. And after I've dug around quite a bit, I found a solution that is uh, quite good and fairly cost effective. So what I mean by that, let me show you how it's supposed to look you have this normal screen and then when you hold and press audio video it switches to a smart tv like interface with whatever it is a smart tv uh, brings you okay um with that said uh, let's just jump into what i did to enable this feature right time to start disassembling just as with the video with the button backlights, uh, we start by removing the top of the center console. Remember, you have a number of clips that are holding this bit in place. Uh, they're inside, about three on this side and three on that other side. So you're supposed to stick some plastic or something underneath and push them. And eventually you'll be able to raise the center console like so. Also, underneath there are two wire bundles going to two connectors one of them is this green one the other one is further at the back and it's gray uh, gently disconnect both of them and once that is done you can continue raising the center console and taking it out all together once the top of the center console is uh, is removed you normally should be able to see that uh, C logic unit. This is something that you need to have previously installed, uh, as I already mentioned. So I will not be covering its installation and its connection to the back of the screen. So it is assumed that you already have this thing installed. And uh, in order to get more room to work on it, to tuck the cables, etc., to clean up, uh, what we'll need to do is to also remove the bottom this large section of the center console which is held in place with four screws one is here the one right here the second is as i lift this thing you see it over there these are torx t20s and then the other two are at the very bottom of the center console the two screws at the bottom are actually placed over there and then on the other side normally what you have in front is you have these plastic covers on top that you need to remove with some plastic trim removal and then behind that you'll find uh, one bolt like this on each side this is uh, apparently a 10 millimeter head so just take both caps off and remove the two screws you might need to have your uh, front seats pushed all the way to the front to be able to access them and then once you've done that the center console should just come out you need to uh, raise it a bit and then pull it uh, towards the back it's not terribly heavy but it's not terribly light either uh, and uh, you might have some difficulty when you move it around i don't really think it's possible to actually physically remove it from the car without removing one of the seats but here's hoping uh, we won't have to I've removed the four screws that uh, hold the center console in place. Before removing it, uh, let me mention a bit what's going on at the moment. 
So you see there's a huge mess of wires down here and also over there. And behind you see that little black box, that thing. That's called a C dot logic something something something. Because uh, it doesn't really have a serial number or a model number on it, unfortunately. But you can Google this brand, C dot logic. Uh, it has components for Land Rovers of various ages. And basically what it does is it hooks up to the back of your infotainment screen and it provides support for additional audio video inputs. Um, it also grabs the signal for the reversing camera. The camera is no longer connected to the screen but to the new C-Logic unit. And it provides two potential inputs uh, of RCA type, so with that kind of uh, jack with three colors, red, yellow and white, I'll show you a bit later. And effectively, as I said before, we're gonna use one of those RCA jacks to provide an additional input to our infotainment screen. Well, that's the plan anyways, hopefully all this work will lead somewhere. Okay, so, um, I'm now gonna continue with removing the center console and then we're gonna see what's what. And lo and behold, I have partially removed the center console. Now it looks this way simply because I haven't really found a way to physically remove it from the car. I can't actually take it out because of the two armrests. I'm not even gonna try, I don't necessarily need to have it out of the car. What I will actually need to do is just to remove this, the large tray, because I'll, I'll need to install the power supplies somewhere around here. But before I go and do that, I just need to do a bit of cleanup. Uh, some of these wires are from the car, some of the other wires are from the C-Logic unit. You see there, the one that I mentioned earlier. Um, this unit also had some additional wires connected to it for a remote control, for etc, etc, which I won't need. And if I won't need them, there's no point in keeping them around because I want to have things as clean as possible. So I will vacuum this a bit and uh, I actually want to first put that thing somewhere over there, if you can, if I can show you, somewhere over there and uh, strap it up or something so it won't be moving anymore. And after all is done, uh, I'll show you the progress and then we'll be moving forward with installing the 12 volt power supplies for our uh, uh, TV setup. Okay, onwards. And while I'm at the topic of cleaning things up, I just wanna show you something. You see, I always emphasize whenever you're working on the electrical part of your car, you need to make sure all of the connections are secure and whatever wires you don't need are properly tucked away. Now this bundle, which has the RCA connections for the audio video, is being held together with this kind of adhesive tape. And then this white wire, which I've gone through the documentation, I haven't really figured out what it should be doing. In any case, we won't be needing it wasn't really connected to anything, it was just more or less sticking out. So it had some black tape on the top, but then the outer part with the exposed metal was sticking out. So in my honest opinion, this is sort this is a no-no. If you have wires that you don't need, what I am actually going to do, I'm going to twist this thing up sort of like this, see? Tape it all the way and then apply some, uh, some of that shrinking, uh, what's it called again? The, uh, you know, the kind of small tube that you apply heat with and then it shrinks so that the metal of this wire will never ever be exposed again. And I'll also apply that kind of insulation here to make sure that these connections cannot uh, ever separate. I'm really not a big fan of this kind of tape. Uh, I think this is the one that you also need to heat up to activate the glue inside. And at this point, after a number of years, it, it just gets, gets really messy. Okay, so I, I want to do it, let's say, in a more professional manner. And give me a couple of minutes and I show you, I'll show you what I mean. So here's what I mean. 
For all of these connections, I actually taped them inside and then apply these shrinking tubes. And the same here, you see the head's no longer exposed. It's twisted inside, taped together. And after applying this, that head, which could have shorted to something, is no longer exposed to anything, okay? This is the kind of connection that I like, okay? This is physically impossible to disconnect on its own as the car is moving. It, it'll have to tear these tubes apart, which is not really going to happen during normal driving. Okay, so with this small detour done, we continue the work. And I've applied the same principle on the wires that are coming from my C-Logic unit that I can't remove because they're all connected to this one big jack. And you see what I mean here, here and here. Okay, these were previously, these four wires were previously genuinely exposed. So you could have touched the metal inside the wire without any issues. These are normal connectors. So the risk of shorting or anything on these ones is pretty low because they're already housed in plastic. But as I keep saying with electrics, it genuinely pays to have a zero risk approach. So everything at this point is properly covered, properly insulated, insulated, the risk of shorting out or doing anything bad is virtually zero at this point, okay? And we want this to happen because if we were not to do this and end up having a problem, then at the best case, we would have an issue that would require us to disassemble the entire center console again to debug it, and at the worst case, well, a fire, okay? We don't want any of those, so that's why we did what we did. And as you can see, I've pretty much finished the cleaning up and tucking of, uh, of wires. So I've secured the C-Logic unit tight against the inner air vents. Okay, it's, uh, it's using double glued tape at the back and uh, some zip ties at the front so it's not moving away from there. All the wires that I don't need are tucked away in one bundle, the big one here, okay? And all I have left at, um, towards the center of the car is the set of uh, audio-video connectors, these ones. And there are two more wires, uh, these ones, which form the auxiliary connection for audio at the back. And while I'm here, before reinstalling the center console, I want to touch a bit on... Uh, another electrical topic that I've also covered when I've installed the reversing camera on the Opel. Uh, so I want to show you the method that I use to make sure that I have uh, strong, uh, strong connections whenever I splice into wires in a car. So my favorite method is to remove the insulation of about, let's say, two centimeters on one wire and just insert Remove the insulation, split the wire bundle apart, like without ripping, make sure not to rip any, any of the threads. And then in the split that you make, you insert the other bundle like this, and then you twist it around the first one until it's solid. Okay, this forms a very good physical and electrical connection. And then on top of that, we will be soldering it properly insulating it and in this way we guarantee that it will not come apart throughout the life of the car. Cool. Here's the end result. I've uh, finished connecting the wires, soldering them, insulating them properly and this is how it looks like. Again same principle as I used with the Opal. Um, just wanted to touch on two topics. Number one, and this is the most important one, even though we're going to be adding additional loads on the electrical system on the circuit of the lighter, right? so on exactly the same circuit that is designed to take higher loads, higher wattages, we will definitely not be touching the fuse. Okay, be very careful with this. Don't go around thinking that, ah, okay, I'm adding something new. I can put a bigger fuse. Definitely don't put, put a bigger fuse in there because the fuses are designed to protect the existing wires. And if you put a bigger fuse and you get higher current on the wires, you may end up burning 
some of the wires in the wire bundle and uh, obviously there's a risk of a fire. So even though we're adding new wires and new loads, we're keeping the same fuse to maintain the same level of electrical protection as before. Number two, you see we've used these mechanical crimp connectors here and we didn't go around connecting the wires directly to our uh, 12 volt sockets that we'll be adding precisely because we want to have the flexibility to disconnect everything in case of issues. So in case we sometime in the future figure out that maybe one of the new 12 volt sockets don't, doesn't work or something like that, then disconnecting them from the uh, car's wire bundle is very simple. We just disconnect from here. If we would have gone around and just solder here and then uh, solder at the back of the 12 volt socket and we would have had issues in that case we would have had to cut the wires and it would have been a much bigger mess okay with that said we can now finally put back the lower center console and i'll show you guys uh, the results in a minute i've installed the lower center console back it's much cleaner and tidier than it was before so our C logic unit is properly tucked away back there. Wires are held in place. Everything is well. Um, what I'm going to do now, live, is uh, actually start the car. Make sure that uh, everything is okay. Nothing explodes. And most importantly, that the reversing camera still works. Because that's connected uh, over there to the right on that uh, wire with the yellow, uh, with the yellow connector. So let's see how this goes. Fingers crossed. Bet you haven't seen anything like this before. I have to be absolutely careful to not have those two wires touch because there's going to be 12 volts on them. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so the car has started. Obviously complaining because because uh, the hood is open and yeah the steering knob is somewhere over there and let's see if I put it in reverse if I'm getting the camera yes I am getting the camera that is perfect that is absolutely perfect okay let's see a fun handbrake yep works good let's drive it a bit backwards oh it's in drive sorry okay this is reverse there we go perfect and we can put it in park and we shut it down so so far so good everything seems to be in order which is absolutely Perfect. Awesome. Given that our initial testing was successful with the cleaning up and everything, let's talk a bit about the new power supplies that we'll be installing. The ones that I keep mentioning ever since the start of the video. So as I explained at the start, the uh, TV unit as well as the signal converter from HDMI to RCA are powered by USB. The TV unit takes, according to the specs, up to one amp. The signal converter, I don't have a maximum amp number for it, but it doesn't take too much. So what I thought was, I would install two additional uh, 12 volt sockets in the center console, uh, in, inside this part of the center console, inside here. I'll show that later. Uh, such that one of them can be used to power everything that I need to get the uh, TV to work on, uh, on our screen. And the second one is just there to be, for example, to be able to charge another phone or something like that. And what I found online while shopping was this nice thing, which actually happens to fit almost perfectly inside our cubby. So that's awesome. And this thing came uh, from the factory with two 12 volt power supplies, as you can see. One of them I can use with whatever I want, so I won't be using this one for now. The second one is more important. Okay, so it gives me two USB ports and up to three amps. 
So naturally I'll use the lower one, which is rated up to 2.1 amps for the TV unit and the one at the top for our signal converter. The package also included various crimp connectors and I've assembled the power wires for the power supplies, red and black. Obviously they connect to the attachments that I made earlier. Uh, and as I explained before, I used the same principle wherever I had to splice wires. I won't go through that again. But the essential bit here is this. These wires connect mechanically to our 12 volt power supplies and connect mechanically to the bundle over there. And before I start drilling holes inside our cubby to properly install this, I want to run another test. So this will be the first time that I'm actually getting the setup as it should be and I'm curious to see just how well the TV is going to behave with our screen. So I'll be back in a moment once I connect everything and we'll give it a go. And it's testing time. So here's the setup. I used the two wires that I assembled earlier to power up both of the 12 volt power supplies. The one that has the two USB ports I've used to power up the black TV stick, the Mi TV stick, and then uh, the other one I've used to power up the signal converter. By the way, when you're using something like this, do note that the output signal must be NTSC compatible, so NTSC not PAL. And then what I did, switch the audio to auxiliary. Uh, this is the only way that the unit allows you to actually capture the audio from whatever it is you've connected to it and then what I need to do I need to hold the audio video button pressed for a couple of seconds and here is the YouTube app opened from the TV stick it's actually open to one of my older films with the um, Corsa cool and change I did this so I don't have any uh, copyright complaints when I film and uh, the me TV stick also gives me a small remote which I can use to never been changed. The power is about seven years old and still has the original coolant. Um, I did a quick measurement on the state of the coolant using our densimeter. And as you can see, okay, I can pause. So you got the idea, right? The setup works both video and audio. We've managed to enable, uh, a TV stick to output content on the screen, which if you think about it actually means a lot, right? You can have pretty much anything that can be visible on a phone. Also screen mirroring, that's the most important one you can output now to the screen of your Range Rover. Cool. So with that done, now we need to move on to the last part, which is assembling the power supply pair right down there on the back of our cubby um, storage box and that means we need to disassemble the storage box and after that is done we should pretty much be able to put everything back and uh, be finished okay so the next step is disassembly of the cubby based on what i've read in the manual with the cubby what you need to do is first you need to remove this bit just use some uh, a plastic trim tool, not metal, to pull this one out. Then there's this, oh, come on, there's this connector which you have to remove. You then pull the wire from here, outside, and then there are these two bolts, one here and one over here, which then allow you to remove the cover on top of the cubby box. And at that point, it should in principle be uh, possible to remove the cubby box altogether. There are also two screws, one here and one here that you're supposed to remove, uh, but they were missing. I'm guessing they were missing uh, since whoever it was changed the interior in the car and they just forgot to put them back. I'll find some replacements when I assemble everything back together. Right. And we got the cubby out. Just as I said, plus I needed to remove those silvery trim bits from here in order to be able to remove the head. And also do note that with all the screws removed, 
uh, the cubby is still held at the bottom with three clips so you need to pull it to get it out okay so now the plan is uh, to actually install our two power supplies around this area I'll have to do some measurements to get them to fit properly and make sure they don't hit anything from the uh, top of the center console but uh, in any case wish me luck and about one and a half hours later here's the result so from inside the cubby you can see them down there they fit perfectly i'm actually amazed they fit so well and i have these two and at the back they're firmly in place and all i need to do now is put everything back together put the plus and minus wires to give them power and that is pretty much it uh yeah they're not perfectly aligned which honestly annoys me because I measured about three times, but uh, well, it doesn't really matter that they're slightly off. No one's going to care. The important thing is that they don't move, not at all. And uh, yeah, that they fit without too many issues. I'm actually quite happy with the way this turned out. Cool. A couple of hours later, I've also finished installing the TV stick and signal converter all the way at the back. So now I can take this back to the car. All that's coming out is the uh, set of wires for the RCA signal. And if you take a look inside, I think it's as about as tidy as it can be. So I'm not losing uh, too much cubby space. These are all held here to the side, powered up on the USBs at the bottom, and uh, yeah, looks uh, looks good. Let's go and uh, put them back in the car. Right, I've assembled the cubby back in its place. Uh, as always, installation is the opposite of removal, so I just had to push it back in until it clicked. Then I had to put uh, these two trim pieces, pieces back, uh, route the cable for the USB through the back of the um, top of the cubby, and then everything went smoothly. Okay, so the system is connected. As you can see, this is the output of the TV stick, working brilliantly. I um, wanted to touch on just uh, a few aspects. So I did a lot of cleaning up. This actually took a lot of time. Uh, I was very liberal in the use of insulating tape and uh, securing everything with zip ties because I don't want things moving around and, uh, I don't know, maybe fatiguing some wires and end up having uh, connection issues later on. So to summarize, our C-Logic box is back there. Everything's, everything is uh, tucked up and secured. We only have our RCA signal wire bunch over there, plus the two wires for the auxiliary input uh, for the passengers at the back. These are secured over there. Uh, I'm also going to tuck this away somewhere around here. I need to drill a small hole so that I can zip tie it there. Uh, but the most important thing that I want to touch on is the way I insulated these bits. So as you can see, I've done two things. The first layer of tape, which is closest to the securing point of the 12 volt sockets, uh, together with one zip tie, has uh, a single role to do. And that is to prevent these things, these, uh, these plastic nuts, from uh, coming loose. Okay, if I would have... I, I've tightened them by hand, but... In time, during vibrations, etc., et there would have been a risk for these things to slacken off on their own. And then I could have ended up having, I don't know, play. So I've done this, this first layer of tape plus the zip tie, which physically prevent the, uh, these nuts from, uh, from coming loose on their own. For the second part, which is over here, you remember that uh, I spent quite a lot of time insulating all the connections and all the soldering points, etc., but to be extra 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 safe I've applied an additional layer of insulating tape plus zip tie towards the end to prevent anything coming into contact with even the smallest um, 
metal tip from the 12 volt power supplies because the connectors don't fit into the tips, the metal tips of the power supplies 100%. The, it's as far as I've seen, uh, the uh, metal connectors of the power supplies are ever so slightly longer. So there is a bit of metal exposed and there is nothing I can do about that. Um, and in order to prevent anything getting uh, into contact with that bit of metal, um, I've applied an additional layer of insulating tape plus the zip tie, meaning there is physically no way for anything to come in contact with the metal pins of the 12 volt power supplies. Cool. So I'm really, really, really liking the way this thing is coming out. Uh, pretty much all that's left to do now is to install the top of the center console back together, screw everything in place, and uh, then we should be done. And here we are about a month and a half after I finished the installation. Uh, during this time I actually managed to drive for like a few thousand miles and I got the chance to test the system pretty thoroughly and I'm extremely happy with the results. And I want to close the video by showing you how it's supposed to work uh, all together. So from the main screen you hit audio video for like two or three seconds and it switches to the input from the TV stick. Uh, and then you go to settings, you can see it uh, top right, network and internet. And at this point, you should have your mobile phone providing internet to the stick. As you can see, I've configured it here. Uh, it's this one, the missing bolts phone. Okay. Um, and after typing in the password for the mobile hotspot, uh, I managed to connect the phone to the unit, as you can see here. So it's getting internet from the phone. And now you can go to the main menu, though that's not strictly essential. And you can obviously use all the apps from the screen coupled with audio from the auxiliary input if you want to like watch YouTube from it, etc. That obviously works. But mostly I use it with the screen sharing functionality of the phone so I can have uh, navigation apps on screen. And to do that, uh, it kind of depends a bit on what phone you have. So if you have an Android phone, it pretty much pretty much should work right out of the box. But for an iPhone uh, uh, like mine, uh, I needed to get a special app. And after quite a bit of research, I found this one, which is pretty good. It's called Replica. So you start it and uh, it should automatically detect whatever units um, are connected to the same uh, same network as the phone. You, This is our unit, Range Rover Sport TV. So we just connect to it. Um, the free version has a few uh, ads. Uh, I was pretty pleased with the application, so I actually bought the uh, Pro one, which wasn't terribly expensive, like, I don't know, like 20, 25 euros, I think. And then you're supposed to hit Start Broadcast. And most of the time it uh, starts immediately, just like it did here. See, so right now what's on the phone is also there. If you tilt it, it'll also tilt as well. And uh, if we now, for example, just open an app for navigation like Google Maps, which you see here, it'll also appear over here. And obviously being screen share, if you twist the screen, it also gets twisted here, right? And at this point, you can imagine that I just keep using it like this with, well, I use mostly Waze, but it is, it's doing a pretty, pretty good job. Um, no issue with connectivity. Occasionally, if I have long trips, it may disconnect after like, I don't know, one hour of usage. Uh, and then most of the time it reconnects automatically. Sometimes it disconnects and I have to uh, reconnect it by hand, but that's um, that's like a minor issue considering the benefit of actually having navigation on the main screen of the car. And I'm gonna close by touching on two topics. Number one, uh, and the most important one, is a summary on the work I've done on the electrical part of the car. And there are some general ideas that I really want to re-emphasize uh, for the sake of your own safety and uh, your well-being as well as the cars. So whenever you add 
new wires to the electrical system of the car and you're installing something, uh, you're customizing something, first of all, be absolutely sure that the wires that you are adding uh, support the amps that are going to be drawn by the new component. That is, be absolutely certain that the wires aren't too thin because there's a major risk of a fire if you're trying to draw too much current from uh, an overly thin wire. Uh, number two, pay special attention to the connections. This should be um, very, very solid. I, I'm not a big fan of those plastic crimp connectors that you just uh, put on between the old wires and the new ones. They're very cheap, you can find them, but I, I, I just don't trust them because uh, I'm pretty sure you can get very poor connections over time as the wires move, as the car moves. I'm a much bigger fan of, you know, twisting the wires as I've shown, soldering them, uh, insulating them and so on, because these are the kind of connections that won't fail. Okay, and uh, yeah, also want to mention again, do not touch the fuses, okay? Just because you're adding a new component is no excuse to insert a bigger fuse uh, for the circuitry that is also supposed to power that, uh, that component because that fuse is there with that size, it's there for a reason. And if you put a bigger fuse, again, you uh, risk starting a fire at some point because you allow the system to draw more amps than it's designed to do. Okay, and the second and last part has to do with the cost. Now, clearly in this video, I sort of cheated a bit because that uh, C-Logic unit was already present in the car. But I did do some research on how much that would cost, and it's about 500 to 550 euros. You can get it, I've seen it on some websites in Germany, in the UK, and so on. That's the rough cost, excluding shipment and so on. And the TV stick plus the signal converter were about 60 euros, give or take, plus whatever you need for the uh, wires, connections, and so on. So. For this particular setup, uh, I would argue a rough cost would be about 600 to 650 euros. Now, I've seen uh, systems which offer Android Auto uh, and Apple CarPlay. Uh, from what I've seen, those work on the nav button, not the audio video one. But those are, as far as I know, much more expensive. Uh, I tried the... Uh, looking up a few and the cost was starting from 700 euros and I've also seen units that went uh, went past a thousand. So cost-wise, I'm, th I'm thinking this is a very good solution. Sure, it's not Android Auto, it's not Apple CarPlay, you can't interact with whatever it is on the screen, okay? This is, uh, the touch doesn't do anything, obviously. This is just uh, an output. Uh, but given the flexibility that you, that you can pretty much share your screen and display whatever it is on the phone, both audio and video, um, I think it is more flexible than a Android Auto or an Apple CarPlay system. But in any case, uh, this is my opinion. I'm pretty happy with uh, the way it came out. If you guys have uh, any comments or suggestions or maybe uh, some additional feedback, feel free to uh, write in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.